and it's called Structural Integrity Calculation for Aging Large Scale Systems. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to introduce you uh, our, the research con context, uh, some words about the concept of structural integrity, notes on philosophical or philosophical approach, and I will give you a sketch of the model. So, as you know, uh, every man-made man system uh, can only be used for a limited time frame, that, which is called the service lifetime. The engineering systems uh, are designed as, as robust, and they have a technically allowable lifetime, which is uh, predicted by so-called structural, inter structural integrity calculations uh, and uh, which is our field is the so-called large-scale high-performance uh, systems. Uh, for example, uh, here you can see a uh, uh, part of a uh, reactor coolant system of a nuclear power plant the most intensively studied uh, subsystem of it is the reactor pressure vessel, which has a uh, height of 10 meters, a uh, diameter of 4, 5 meters, and there is a steam generator uh, with the same dimensions, uh, main coolant pump and main coolant pipelines with uh, diameters of, of uh, a meter and lengths of, of 10 meters. Uh, in the last decades, these systems have been designed for higher and higher temperatures in order to achieve uh, higher thermodynamic efficiency. They became more and more complex. And uh, <clears throat> nowadays, they are uh, implemented in the so-called life cycle uh, model, uh, which contains the conceiving, designing, implementing, operating, and the commissioning, and uh, the ecological footprint of a system is assess assessed by life cycle analysis, but the uh, state of the system is uh, calculated by structural integrity calculations. These systems have a <coughs> long lifetime. The older systems uh, design lifetime, design service lifetime of 30, 40 years. Nowadays, the newer systems are designed for uh, 60, 80 years of operation. And the uh, structural integrity calculations are based on, on the real data that are extracted from, from the operating systems, where the digital twins will be uh, a promising approach to enhance the quality of these calculations. But there are uh, challenging problems when we go into so-called lifetime ex extension into the long-term operation range, which for older systems is about 60, 80 years. And uh, for newer systems can be also 120 operating years. It is uh, four generation. Uh, in human life. So it's, it's quite a challenging problem. Therefore, uh, we think the whole uh, methodology has have to be uh, discussed or, or redesigned. This, as I said, the goal of structural integrity calculations for the system is to achieve a more realistic assessment for its uh, technically allowable lifetime. But uh, at the methodological level, we have uh, more aspects. We have philosophical aspects, scientific, engineering, and uh, <coughs> everyday as aspects, uh, which is an uh, industrial aspect. So, as I said, our uh, concept uh, has four uh, four year uh, chapter, which uh, we borrowed from the systemology. The systemology uh, st 
states that the design, implementation, and operation of, of these complex systems can only be successfully performed if the, these four relatively independent areas form a holistic system, uh, which means that when solving uh, this task, uh, all the uh, aspect areas shown in the diagram has to be carefully as assessed to form uh, a solution, uh, preferably a coherent system. The, system, the idea behind the conceptual structure is that uh, every, uh, any, any of these areas uh, carry all only partial knowledge, knowledge on the uh, wall, about the wall. And if we knew, if we know something uh, in one area, we have also complementary information or knowledge in the other areas. If change is made in one area, then locally the complementary information can be omitted or, or assumed as, as constant. But in the long term, must not be ignored that the line, the school aspects are in fact non-independent and can only be treated together in a coherent way to lead a more complete knowledge of the whole. This was also a rough the illustration of the concept uh, entanglement, which is uh, used as a passport uh, by uh, physicists today and is under uh, hot discussion. <coughs> the first question arose in our research, why we should use uh, or, or uh, contemplate uh, about philosophy. Uh, in summary, we can say that epistemology, which is the how to acquire knowledge uh, from the systems is at the best to be discussed in the, in the frame of philosophy. Uh, independently of the, of the state of art of the sciences. Uh, it is in contrast uh, with the specialist uh, view that some argue that philosophy has been dissolved in, into science and, and therefore lost its, its vitality. So that is not true, we state the opposite. We have two hypotheses behind our model. The first one is the dynamic presentism hypothesis, which uh, states that objects in our world exist dynamically and each has a finite extent in any dimension uh, from, from certain geometry or time dimension. So the extension for, for the large scale is that uh, we assume that the whole universe is, universe is also finite, but, but it is incredible and unimaginably huge. The second one uh, in our uh, framework is the irreversibility and dissipation, uh, which occurs naturally and inevitably in our world, uh, which is uh, concluded by Oettinger, Hans Christian Oettinger, the father of of, uh, of the so-called generic approach of modern time thermodynamics. Then, but it is very interesting that uh, even Aristotle uh, had uh, a dissipative approach to physics. So the dynamic presentism hypothesis uh, leads to the conclusion that we have an arrow of time it's only one way. The geometry and uh, the lifetime of the objects are finite, and uh, the dissipation causes in, in solid metals uh, memory effects. But this, on, sci on scientific level, uh, the consequence, the first and the basic consequences of the philosophical approach 
that modern thermodynamics means modern irreversible or non-equilibrium thermodynamics may serve as a suitable basic physics theory for structural integrity. The second one is that dissipation uh, is a common cause of aging phenomena and fracture effect phenomena. So here uh, there are the main uh, equations, the aggression of motion and the kinematical model and the balances, mass balance, linear momentum balance, angular momentum balance, the energy balance is the first law of thermodynamics and uh, uh, in thermodynamics the thermodynamics is exist, uh, use usually the entropy balance it is uh, in our approach in the energy picture is the dissipation balance. We have three energies, kinetic, uh, iron holds free energy and thermal energy density and the constitutive equations. The fracture mechanical part of the model is the, is the generalized J integral but with a significant improvement that instead of the strain energy density in the middle of the integral, the corresponding Helmholtz free energy arises. Some words about the aging. The essence of the experimental and ex experience is so far that uh, uh, the materials become more and more brittle during aging. And how to uh, describe that behavior was the name of the study. The investigations came that de developing a qualitative phenomenological model. And uh, our description is based on a special modified Ginsburg-Landau form of the Helmholtz potential. The original form of the Landau-Ginsburg plot potential is a quadrat uh, quadratic term and, and a fourth order term and looks like so and our model looks like so. It, it's the opposite. And the second uh, key point is that we introduced a conform, conformal transformation into the description during time which the idea was first uh, presented by Hermann Weyl in the theory of general relativity 90 years ago. And uh, we claim that the present system of transformation provides a promising approximate description of the behavior of aging structure materials. Uh, I calculated it for, for a uh, hypothetic material, uh, which so the, the first one is this uh, behavior uh, descripts tactile behavior and this uh, regime describes uh, brittle behavior as can be seen on the, on the derived uh, <coughs> flow curves. Here, for the sake of simplicity, I uh, assumed linearly higher hardening material here <coughs> becomes the, the slow but in, in increasingly uh, in, in, increasing damage the second is the fast damage and here is the the fast fracture and here when the material is uh, brittle after some uh, hardening, the fast fracture occurs uh, in very fast, without, without any uh, damage, any slow damage, let's say. So these are the curves uh, in three dimensions. So, the, the key point of that model is that uh, up to our current knowledge, uh, I, or after 
up to my knowledge, uh, I was not able to find any any such description in the in the literature which could uh, define a way to transform uh, originally ductile uh, originally ductile uh, flow curves and side curves into brittle. That's the main uh, and result of, of this in this part of the project. Thank you also. Thank you for a nice presentation. Any question? Okay, we'll follow the next paper. Thank you very much. Thank you.